All right, guys, welcome back. Give me a little moment there, feeling that bliss. All right, so I'm making this video here to go over some of the things that I've already been talking about. Now, I've mentioned several things that would kind of imply that this so-called reality external world is an illusion or that it's fake and that it's not real. And to clarify, I made a little video, but I'm going to talk about it further here, that it's not so much that it's fake or that it doesn't exist, but that it is a secondary reality. There's a primary reality of consciousness or the level of spirit, which is that eternal divine spark within us, which sees through our eyes and animates our bodies and, you know, fills us with the joy and the bliss that we experience when we are connecting with God or a loved one or even just this present moment. Uh, that connection and that relationship to that primary reality, which sometimes is called God or the unmanifest or the source, that is where the power comes from. The power to love your life, the power to create the life that you want comes from the relationship and the connection to the one, the oneness from which this all comes from. It does not come from the external world and that's one of the main illusions that we are operating under as a society which is still a bit asleep. Now, sometimes when you say things that can wake people up, the society itself and the energy and the fields around it get a little wacky and there's some resistance so you'll bear with me and if you happen to see things around this in your life you know just know that change and evolution require that things adjust and that some older things give way for newer things it's neither positive or negative there's no judgment it's just simply evolution into oneness love reality now the secondary reality of the external world can be viewed as a movie in the sense that it, it is not causal and it is not the source of anything so sometimes in the dream the sleepy self the ego self become con convinced that it is deriving its joy from a external object it can be a sexual partner, it can be a drug, it can be a TV show, it can be a food. That is what I mean by illusion. That's when I say, when I say that this external reality has been attributed properties and qualities, which it doesn't have, this is what I mean. I mean that it doesn't have the quality or the property of sourcing or causing anything. It is simply the effect. It is the screen upon which the workings of consciousness and the cause of consciousness gets expressed. It is the screen upon which we see the effects of that which is caused by consciousness or life or God or the divine spark within or spirit. But it itself doesn't cause anything. Similar to when you're watching a movie. If you're watching a movie and in the movie a lot of people are being killed and some guys taking over the world, you don't have to fear for your actual real life because you know that that movie is not going to have any real cause effect on your reality. Similarly, when you realize that you are a spirit and that the love that comes and the joy that you feel and the pleasure doesn't come from an external object, it doesn't come from that sexual partner or that drug or that food or that TV show, it literally is coming back from the same thing which is experiencing it. It's, it's coming from the one I am true being source of everything that exists and everything that is which is consciousness or undifferentiated consciousness the oneness the observer within the the infinite spirit from which all the love and joy in the world comes from to begin with therefore it is an illusion and a delusion to believe that the external world is providing us with pleasure joy, um, fulfillment. It, it can't. It can give us gratification and it can give us 
a f temporary sort of pleasure which comes from a relief in the tension which is generated by the external world itself or by our thoughts of the external world. But what actually gives us the experience is never the external world. It's different layers of things. One, one main strong layer is the mental filter through which you interpret everything that you perceive from the external world. Now, the external world only provides information, sensual st stimulation of the senses, right? But the actual experience that you feel in your soul is provided by the interaction of your spirit with your personality or your soul and your personality. When those two interact and they decide what's real and what programming of reality you're responding to, which is to say which beliefs about the experience are you going to respond to or which which belief are you going to operate under or which program are you tuning into or, or running, which program are you running about the experience or about the event, which program are you running about the event in order to produce a given experience. So let me say that again. Your spirit and your personality, your, your personality which is your attitudes and beliefs, and your spirit, which is your the source of everything that you can possibly experience and everything that exists in the world, they interact to decide which programming you're going to tune into about a given event, a given occurrence that happens in the external world to generate the intention that you most wanted or that you most chose to create. Which is to say that it's not the external world that produces the experience, but it is the program, mental belief system that you have about the event in the external world which truly generates that experience. And this program is somehow trapped or sometimes gets compulsively running automatically in the personality, in the mental chatter. Right? And the spiritual practice is to bring in that spirit, that spiritual level of consciousness to replace or adjust the programmings that no longer serve you with a newer program or a system update, a software update that matches the reality which you most choose to generate. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to make many videos like this, but this one is really just getting to understand what I mean by the, why is it an illusion? Why do so many spiritual people say that the, the external world is a, it's a maya or the illusion and that nirvana is the extinction of this ego self? Well, I mean, that's the extinction of the ego self, which is nirvana, is the suspension of the chattering personality, mental, mind, compulsive programming, which runs automatically. By bringing in more spirit, more of that pure consciousness, more of that true, undifferentiated, infinite spark of divine beingness into your personality, you can override false programming that no longer helps and you can begin to create a mental structure that matches your spiritual nature, which is one of love and joy and harmony, balance, right? It's creative. It, it loves to create and care for its creations and take delight in its creations. And, and that's the nature of, of reality. That's why it's so often I liken to a play or a movie. Again, it's the creation but it's really the creator within that is the true self and who is truly in control of what experiences you generate and what experiences you feel within you. And, you know, basically by the experiences that you feel and the choices that you make, you create a loop that, that generates more of that. And if the external world feeds back to you the information that you have put out to it, 
via your intention, your personality, and your spirit, it feeds back to let you know what you're creating, and then you get to determine as a conscious observer whether or not I am enjoying or if I like what I see in the external world. If you don't like what you see in the external world, rather than going out there and trying to change it, since it's more like a movie than anything else, you go within and you talk to the director and you talk to the producer, which is your personality and your spirit, and you make changes in there. You don't just yell at the screen and resist and get mad about people walking into a dark alley when the bad guy's already in there. No amount of yelling is going to warn those people in the movie. It's, and, you know, just like that, nothing, no amount of worrying and fighting the external reality is going to create the changes that you're looking for. So therein lies the freedom. Therein lies the nirvana. When you are no longer looking to the outside world, and no longer needing to experience yourself and identify yourself with an individual, isolated, separate, ego, identity, self that says, I am Mario, I'm Mario, everything else is not Mario, and I'm here all by myself trying to do the best I can in this world. You, you, have a, you can let that go for a little while and, and, and realize that that's actually a character that you're playing in the movie and that the true self the spirit that God gave you is your true nature and it's observing it all in a very amused sort of blissful almost indifference about the whole thing because it understands that the duality between right and wrong light and dark is actually a oneness of yin yang harmony well I hope this was very helpful I send you much love and appreciation I invite you to share and like and post any comments, as many questions as you want. And yeah, any kind of feedback at all would be greatly appreciated. Satnam, namaste, God bless, be well.